<coughs> Hi, here we are, and today I am with one of the world's top adventurers, <laughs> Alistair Humphreys. And we're romantically sitting here together on a park bench, mate, in Green Park. And it's just spitting with rain at the moment, but it hasn't come. But we're we're tough, we're tough, aren't we, mate? You've got a hat on. You're you're tougher than I am, that's why, <laughs> mate. Is. I, if I were you, I'd have a hoodie up now. Okay. Alistair, you've cycled around the world, you've walked across India, you've rode the Arctic, you've been on National Geographic. Um, you're now basically doing this pioneering thing with micro adventures. Your books are best selling books. My mate Hugh Phillips, he's a massive fan of your books. He loves books, mate. He plows through the books and he said your two books are the two probably the two best books he's ever read in his life well i'll pay him now give me a fiver yeah, give me a fiver exactly. for saying yeah. that but um there we go mate um how did you get into all of this sort of micro adventures where you were like, you come out of school and then what happened i came out of school didn't really do anything very exciting at school went to university really lazy at university not very good at anything bit of a wimp and decided I wanted to do something difficult and challenging and exciting and so I decided to try and cycle around the world so because it was big and difficult and got me to see the world but also it was quite simple and cheap which is quite important when you're young so I jumped on my bike set off to see how far I'd get and I kept going for 46,000 miles four years till I got back home once I'd done that I thought wow I can't believe I've done that that I never actually thought I'd finish it if I've done that what else can I do? And then you start to get a bit addicted to the whole adventure thing. So you do. You just went off one day on a forty-six thousand mile bike ride. What training did you have prior to that? I did no training. You did no training <laughs> at all, and if, you completed one of the biggest yeah. ever bike rides well, in the world. If, if you're going to cycle forty-six thousand miles, you don't really need to do any more miles. You don't. It's a bit <laughs> overkill. <laughs> There's no need for it, is there, exactly. mate? Exactly, and I wasn't racing anyone, so I could just start unfit, and within a month, you're as fit as you'll ever be. That, that's it, isn't it? And you can consistently, how many miles were you banging out a day, or? I start, at the start, I was doing about 50 a day, and by the end, I was doing about 100 a day. Fantastic, and obviously, it's like some people, obviously, if you're racing, you streamline everything, but you were carrying probably quite a bit of kit. Yeah, I had two big panniers on the front, two big on the back, and then a dry bag on the back of my tent and stuff, so I had quite a lot of gear. And it depended where I was, so in places like Siberia in the winter, I had enough clothes to keep me warm at minus 40. When I was in the desert in Africa, I had 17 litres of water, so 17 kilos of water, so it was often quite heavy, a heavy load. That's heavy, mate. Two panniers on the back, two panniers on the front, other kit on your back. You might as well have just shoved the kitchen sink in there. <laughs> yeah, we're tired. Because, because I, I wasn't trying to race anyone, yeah. so, so I did often have quite a lot more gear than was necessary because it was, it was my life. It was four years of my life. So I quite often had 10 books with me. Which 10 is, books? I had 10 books and no underwear. No underwear. There's yeah. no, you went commando, mate. I went commando, yeah. Me, I five, mate. Can't fault a bit of your <laughs> commando. Not like Para, like Leveson Wood. You know what I mean, Matt? I love you, Lev, if you're watching this. Um, right. Uh, I can ask some questions from Hugh now as well. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. What is your favourite country you've travelled through? Obviously, it's gonna, you're going to say Wales, but apart from Wales, what is it? Yeah, Wales, that province of England, I quite like. Now! I... What? Hang on, I'm answering the questions here. Uh, I, I liked so many places for lots of different reasons. You yeah. like places for the people or the food or the culture or the landscape. Yeah. We do Welsh cakes, mate. Do you? We do Welsh cakes and... Uh, rare bits. And rare bits. And we do Welsh cakes, mate. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's it. That's what we um, do. But in, I will choose two countries, and this answer changes quite often, but at the moment my favourite countries are Iceland for yeah. the empty, beautiful wilderness and India for the lack of empty wilderness and the crowds and a billion crazy interesting people and good food. Do you know what my favourite place is mate? Where's that? Southern California. Do you know what for? Why? The hot chicks and the gorgeous weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you get that in Wales? Yes of One course out of you two. do mate. <laughs> you, get, you do get some hot chicks in Wales. Isn't <laughs> okay. Catherine Zeta-Jones mate. Yes. They all look like Catherine Zeta-Jones in Wales. Do they? As soon as you go over that <laughs> seven bridge mate it's pow. Okay. That's what they look like. Um, you're doing these micro adventures. Can you tell us a little bit about micro adventures? Because some people think of adventurers and explorers and stuff like that as 
this massive thing going in around the world, micro adventures. Well, the, the, your exact thing then about people thinking that adventure is big and that adventurers are somehow different to normal people is exactly the point I was trying to tackle. And I wanted to try and show firstly that normal people can have adventures. I'm a normal person. Normal people can have adventures. And secondly, that you don't need to row across the Atlantic Ocean to have an adventure. You can have adventures that's short, local, cheap. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need lots of gear. You just need to look at the opportunities around where you happen to live and just go and do something. Doing something is better than doing nothing. That was the starting premise, really. And then I just set about trying to explore my country, our country, Britain, um, finding beautiful, wild places that I'd never really known existed. And it's become quite addictive. Yeah, there's, because there's lots, even in Pembrokeshire, I go around certain little places on, on a bike, for example. I've never even been there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? And there's lots I, of places. Yeah. I walked, I did, one of the micro adventures I did was to walk a circle two miles away from my house. I live in a village, two mile, a two mile circle around it and to sleep somewhere around there. Two mile circle comes to about 15 miles and sleep out somewhere. And within that two miles, I can guarantee everyone would go somewhere they'd never been before. Yeah. So you can be genuinely exploring within a few miles from home. We've been exploring today because I've never been on this bench in this park of part of Green Park before, mate. <laughs> well, We're exploring all over the place. I'm going to go for a little explore around that tree in a minute <laughs> as well. Um, have you got any plans to bring the micro adventures to TV? I tried. I tried. We've got a guy who's just going to walk straight in front of the camera. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about that. You know, a lot of it is just about ploughing on, yeah. isn't it, mate? I tried for a couple of years to get micro adventures on tv i think it's got a lot of potential but it's not very epic it's not very bear grills and helicopters and explosions on the, and yeah. and therefore i didn't succeed and what i've decided then is to just keep my destiny in my own hands to just do stuff myself to make my own films to put them on youtube to try and encourage people by myself and try and just grow it from grassroots up and to hell with the tv on the note of bear grills mate Hit one of his claims to fame as drinking his own piss. Have you gone down that road yet? Not since I was a student. <laughs> <laughs> They've all done it. They all say, I don't think, I, I think I'm the only person that haven't done it. Do you know what I do? I'm going to get back to my hotel later. No, I'm not going to. Maybe someday when I'm out in the Atlantic Ocean, when I'm on the old, what's the, um, oh, what, Tom Hanks, when he's stranded on an island, when my plane goes down and I'm stranded on the island... Then you'll be thanking Bear Grylls. Then I'll be thanking Bear Yes, Grylls. exactly. <laughs> Have you met Bear? I haven't met him. Have he, you met he was, Bear? No, he was very kind and he wrote a foreword for my second book, which I really appreciated, but no, I've never met him. Fantastic. And um, Ra Sir Ranulph Fiennes, one of the world's greatest explorers, um, explorers, adventurers, he's right at the top there sort of thing. Um, have you met him? I've, I've come across him a couple of times. I spoke at an event with him recently, uh, but I was too scared to go and say hello. He's posh, isn't he, mate? He's even posher than me. His <laughs> full name is Sir Ranulph Twistleton Wickham Fines. No! That, that Sir Ranulph Twistleton Wickham Wick Fines? That is a proper name. Yeah. Do you, know what tell, do you know what a proper name is? What? Mark James Llewellyn, mate. That's, that's not a bad. That's a proper <laughs> okay. name. That's a proper Welsh name for you. But I'm supposed to say it Llewellyn. Um, right. What would you say the three biggest keys to success are? Ooh. Beginning. Um, Realising you're capable of more than you imagine, so setting a big target, and not giving up. Yeah. But starting, I think, is the most difficult thing of all. Yeah. And do you think a lot of it with some people, it's just that fear that they have, they think, I can't do that. Well, I do this myself. I come up with some sort of idea, like I want to run to China or something, and instead of me thinking, that's brilliant, I'll buy some trainers and start exercising, I start thinking, oh, but I probably will fail and I'll hurt my legs and then I won't get a visa and I can't afford it and everyone will tease me. And, and I, think it, I think that's a very natural thing to think. And it takes quite a lot of um, willpower to make yourself think a bit more positively. Probably not for you, actually, I'm guessing. You seem quite a positive fellow. No, mate, <laughs> I'm down in the dumps all the time. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm pretty positive. But I tell you what, I work on it all the time. It's like I work on, um, I feed my mind with positive stuff. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't really watch the news much. 
I goddamn feel like killing myself. If I watched a combination of the news and EastEnders back to back, I probably you probably see me stringing up myself, mate. Well, don't do it then. I'm not going to. Happiness. Would you say you find happiness, and if you have, which I think you have, what are the keys to happiness? Wow. Which is, yeah, go. Um, I think I'm looking for happiness, and I think I would trade everything I've ever done to just feel genuinely happy. I think I'm restless and yeah. struggling and searching towards it, and I've at times in my life made the mistake of thinking that success equals happiness which is very yes. much not true yes. I spent four years cycling around the world the biggest ambition of my life thinking that when I got to the finish line and succeeded I would suddenly then be eternally happy hallelujah exactly. you know what I mean it's like God yeah. says hallelujah whereas in fact I woke up the next day and I was exactly the same as I'd been yesterday so I think I'm I'm I'd say I'm mediumly happy yeah that ever pursuit of happiness, mm. mate. Um, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Have we got any more questions from Hugh, mate? We might have, mm -hmm. and we. Um, oh yeah, what's your next challenge, anyway? The next thing for me is the just trying to grow the micro adventure idea. To try, I, it's been becoming quite popular now amongst people who like the outdoors and things. But what I really want to do is try and reach people who've never even considered sleeping on a hill or getting out into the wilds or exploring a national park people who've never even heard of sleeping bags and try and find them and persuade those guys to go and try yeah doing something do you know when you said you know going and sleeping rough and stuff like that you know when i interviewed leveson yesterday after the interview this is a bit of good footage for you now guys because this wasn't on camera <laughs> but he told me he was very honest I mean, he came out of the, the army, he was an officer in the army, and then he ended up sleeping on um, in, in his mate's couches and park benches and stuff like that. And um, it kind of, uh, I don't know, I know it's slightly different from planning to go, sorry, outdoor. I almost filled you full of spit there, mate. Yeah, I <laughs> noticed, <Welsh>. yeah. <laughs> but um, when you're down in the dumps like yeah. that, or, you know, he might have not been down in the dumps psychologically because you can still do all of that stuff. Mm. Like you say, you don't need money to be happy and stuff like that. How do people pull themselves out of a situation where they're like really depressed and, uh, you know, think, God, I've, I've had enough of this life? Well, there's a massive, massive difference between what I do, which is voluntarily choose to uh, eat rubbish food and have a hard time and sleep <laughs> sleep out and get cold yeah. voluntarily versus people who yeah. are not doing that voluntarily and I wouldn't I wouldn't want to blur the two yeah um, and I think it it does take a degree of affluence and spare time in order to be able to afford a good sleeping bag and a weekend yeah. free away from just having to chase all the time so I appreciate all that having said that if you're in a position whereby you've got enough money and enough time to be able to afford 100 quids worth of gear and you've got a weekend off and you're feeling down in the dumps then I think jumping on a bus heading out of the city to the countryside hiking up a big hill and watching the sunset is probably as good a possible way of starting to cheer yourself up as as anything I think yeah just take a break uh, you know because sometimes we can get so stressed out and we're going from meeting to meeting or from you know you know uh I can't even think about what I was yeah. going to say now. But well, I think yeah. I'll, I'll help you then. I think. Um, oh, cheers, mate. Yeah, I think a really good thing about getting out into the wild <laughs> yeah. and climbing some sort of hill is it helps just put things in perspective a yeah. little bit. It helps you your worries and your things that just dry, gr get you down and get you down. If you just climb up some big hill and watch the sunset, it can't help but give you a little bit of a perspective change and maybe help you start thinking a bit more positively about stuff. Just take some time out. I've got a friend now. He's like he's on planes all around the world working for a top diplomat um, and she like spend 100 200 thousand pound in the weekend and he said she is absolutely miserable so yeah it's, it's, it's a funny thing isn't well, it? there's a book a good book called stuffocation which is about that trying to the fact that trying to buying stuff doesn't lead you to happiness no and that's certainly true yeah maybe buying me a woolly hat would make me a little bit more happy but do you want this one, mate? No, no, it's You're fine. a little bit jealous of my, little, I hat, am, my yeah. little woolly hat. I've got a different sponsor, though. Yeah, uh, have you? Yeah. Uh, what, what have you got? Who's your sponsor? <laughs> well, they're clearly not very good because they haven't sent me a woolly hat. Well, you, who are, are, we, are you allowed to say who your sponsor yeah, is? Yeah, of course. They're Haglofs. They sponsor me outdoor gear. Although, actually, look, I'm wearing Howie's, which is a Welsh 
company. Do you know Howie's? Bring it in, mate. I've never heard of them, but I like them now because in they're the from Wales. the Wales. Yeah, very good. Howie's from the Wales. They're good. Howie's from the Wales. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Howie's. I didn't even do a very good Welsh accent. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> but I am Welsh. <laughs> right, mate. Yeah. We're going to give away a couple of books to our lovely listeners. And uh, first of all, Hugh Phillips, the god. Um, I'm going to... Uh, You've signed this for Hugh. That's very kind of you. Does that mean you can now only give it away to someone called Hugh? Yeah. Which is half of Wales. I don't even Wales. like Hugh anymore. That's half I'm gonna of find, Wales. I tell you who I'm going to give it to. Who? Hugh Grant, mate. Okay. I'll, say, I'll be like, a, I'll give it to Hugh Grant or who's another famous Hugh Hugh Jackman. Person? Hugh Jackman. I like him, okay. mate. I tell you what, mate. I'm going to send it to Hugh Jackman. I say, hey, Hugh, how about we do an interview, mate? Okay. And he'd say, you spelt my name wrong. You spelt it Welsh. I spelt it Welsh. And then yeah. he'll get his big Wolverine claws out and yeah. he'll go like, have some of that. Now you've got another book here, mate. The Boy Who Biked the World. I don't know if I showed that last one. So this, the Boy Who Biked the World. You've got eight books out at the moment. Is it eight? Eight, yeah. Number nine coming out in March. Now we're going to give this away in a way in a competition. So all you have to do is uh, scroll down the likes. Uh, no, no, click the like. And then my son Leon, he'll scroll down the likes and he'll pick the winner. Um, this is actually a really good book for me because it's a children's book and I could probably understand it and read it. <laughs> I can't be doing with any of these big heavy books. Yeah, there's not many long words in there's that. Just, there's not many, no. and especially that long Welsh word. Go. That one. You're just putting me... Oh. You're just, you're just putting knew, me to shame! I, I knew even... at some time in my life that geography this, homework would come in useful. It's there, mate. This is your moment oh, in life. I'm very this proud. is where it's shining down yeah. on you. That was what, when I was about... Built up to this point in your life. When I was about 11, yep. our geography homework from our teacher, who obviously hadn't thought of much, was to go and learn that word, that place name. Oh, my God. What a great homework. That's fantastic. Well, I, I've learned some big Welsh words. Have you? Yep, Tembi. Tembi. Milford. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to expand out now. I'll get to it's about three eight. syllables. Yeah, 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 I'll expand out as I go along. Um, website, you've got a website? I have, alistairhumphreys.com. Yep. Social media, all that sort of stuff. Social media, so you're on Twitter, are you on Facebook? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, yep. blog. YouTube videos, everything like. So, um, are you doing any speeches, any talks coming up, or? Uh, I, I do some talks uh, probably every month or so, just to the just to the public around the place, and you can find out about them on my website. Fantastic, Alistair Humphreys, adventurer, explorer, and a goddamn good man. It's been an honour and a pleasure, mate. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. I've Thanks enjoyed very it. Much, Al. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>